there is no argue that QML is amazing technology to develop outstanding user interface. The syntax of QML language is pretty and easy to learn, but it does not structure well by itself. In fact, QML code can get quite messy fast. What problems is this causing? What makes QML code clean? and what you can do to increase the quality of your QML-based project. You can find answers to all those questions in this episode, so they will help you save time, money, and a lot of nerves. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Cute Talk program. We are talking here about software development, in particular about Qt framework, C++ language, cross-platform programming, and embedded systems development. My name is Lukas Kosinski. I am the CEO of Safe Studio, Qt QML consulting company. We help our customers achieve their objectives by providing them with skilled Qt developers. Clean QML code. The topic of today's episode is based on my personal experiences as Qt software developer and on observations of my team while working on various Qt projects. The very same content, but in a written form, you can find on our blog. If you prefer reading, then go ahead. There are some code examples there as well, so you may like it. Just like announced in the intro, we'll talk about three things. What problems does messy QML code cause and code in any technology in general? What makes QML code clean? And what you can do to increase the quality of your QML based project? So what are the problems that messy code can cause besides vomiting in extreme cases? I'm sure that I do not have to convince experienced developers and Qt framework insiders to care about code quality. Uh, but let's summarize those problems anyway. The first thing that comes to my mind is bad code readability. Code is written once, but it is read multiple times. Whenever you or your team member have to go back to the code base to change something or hunt a bug, messy code can be a problem there. It simply slows you down and prevents you from finding the issues faster not to mention nerves that you lose spending time this way. Another thing is the fact that your colleagues have to spend more time on reviewing your changes. Good, of course, it's good if they care about standards in your project, but bad that they have to spend their time to often point just small visual things. So save them the effort and polish your code before pushing. You do not want to waste your colleagues' time. Yet another problem caused by messy code is that um, project is less maintainable and then it's a struggle for newcomers to start contributing. So if you are a project leader or project owner and you did not introduce code conventions, guidelines, standards to your project and one of your developers decides to leave it, to leave the project, then you have problem. New software engineers will have a harder job getting familiar with the code base and to be fully effective. And as mentioned earlier, those problems cause a waste of time, money and nerves. Now, what actually makes QML code clean? Well, you could separate those into three categories. Code formatting, projects and file structure and code conventions. Firstly, code formatting is about the Code style, it's how your code looks, it's about indentation, white spaces, new lines, and properties grouping. It, of course, it does not affect the application execution in any way. However, it influences um, readability, right? Many of such things are personal preferences, and of course, there is no point in arguing whether bracket opening should be in this line or in the next line. The goal is always to be consistent and to make your code look clean. Uh, later I will show you some tips how to make it easier for you. Next thing is projects and file structure. You could code entire application in just one QML file, right? But to actually make your code clean, it's important to divide your code into multiple files. 
Um, I would actually recommend doing that, creating new QML JavaScript files whenever you have some UI elements or separate functionalities. And I would do that as soon as possible. Um, by the way, together with Michal from Sci Studio, we recorded a cute talk episode about um, good practices on creating new QML components. Uh, there you can find some more topi tips on this topic, so make sure you check it out. The nice structure of Qt QML projects is also the one that uh, integrates C++ for their logic. There are not many things as difficult to organize as JavaScript function in QML. If you have background as a C++ developer, then just keep QML mostly for the UI. And the last thing that makes QML code clean is following conventions. There are many similar tiny decisions to make and same scenarios to implement, so it would be good to have a rules for such things to make everything in the same way every time. If you think about typical QML custom item, what do you find there? You find their ID, some inherited properties, own properties and signals, JavaScript functions, signal handlers, visual children, not visual objects like timer or connections, states, transitions, and probably something else, right? So the order of QML attributes is just an example of a thing that you can standardize in your project. Uh, you can take a look at that blog, blog post that I mentioned uh, to get another ideas. Link is in the description. Before we go further, I wanted to also ask you to like this video and subscribe to Sci Studio channel. This way you stay up to date with our content and you help us feed YouTube's algorithm so we can share our message to more people, to more people that are interested in Qt, C++ and other similar topics. So now what exactly you can do to increase the quality of your QML codebase? Well, let's start with the easiest thing. Just employ tooling to format your code and look for the typical QML issues like you know, uh, unqualified access, for example. Uh, what tools am I exactly talking about? First, in the Qt Creator, you can use reformat file option from QML.js menu. It takes your file and it, then it formats it so all the things like new lines, white spaces or semicolons are fixed. You can even make it work automatically on a file save if you want. Uh, there is also a command line option, QML format tool that you can use to basically achieve the same. And there is of course um, QML lint that takes a lot of industry knowledge from other Qt developers to let you know about the issues that you did not even know about. Okay. So what else you can do to increase your QMS project quality? You should establish some kind of a project conventions that will describe suggested approaches for typical QML things. Such conventions can be saved in uh, project files, in markdown format, in readme, in GitLab wiki or in Confluence. And we, as a consulting company, we often work with customers' infrastructure, so we keep our base conventions on our wiki, among tons of other tutorials, rules, and tips. And then, starting new projects or joining existing ones, we have something to start with. Another thing that you can do is create a checklist of things to verify after making it change to the project. That should be something for both the reviewer and you. So, for example, after making every change, you should make sure that functionalities were actually implemented as expected, or a bug that was in the issue was fixed, and that you actually tested that. You should make sure that all automatic tests pass, that code formatting is consistent uh, with the rest of the project, and that you follow conventions, and if not, you have explanation for that. And to not waste somebody's time, you should first go over such a checklist on your own, you know, before you ask others to do the same. You are responsible for your changes. You can also introduce a CACD system to do a lot of things for you. It's a huge 
each topic, but I have made a blog post about it. So feel free to take a look in your spare time. The link is also in the description and you can integrate uh, the tooling that I mentioned about also to your CICD. The last thing that would come to my mind is uh, letting external consultants to go over your project, suggest changes, point out bad things, and finally come up with a plan for refactoring uh, that could be done either by you or by them. Okay guys, so for today's episode, that is all. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you find my tips useful and maybe that you also agree with them. All the links, all the materials that I mentioned are in the description. Um, and also before you go, I wanted to remind you that clean QML code base is important to keep your code base maintainable and also to save you some time and some nerves and some money. And yeah, remember that no convention or, gu or guideline is written on a stone. You can have your opinion, your preferences. If you are new to the project, then adapt to existing code style. And if not, discuss changes with your colleagues first. Maybe you can convince them. Now let me know in comments what tip was the most inspiring for you. Yeah, and thanks again, and we see each other in the next episode of Cute Talk.